And we are back for another episode of Boots, Balls and Bras um, alongside m and Eat Well, myself, Eartha Pond, Farrell Williams, who was on air, not really on air, um, <laughs> doing some comms today. Um, England game overran. I think that wasn't in the plan for anyone, um, but we're definitely going to get into it. Loads to talk about. Um, excited in terms of England making it through to the next round. But before that... We've got some games to dissect, some players to shout out or not to shout out. Um, Farah, England, Angleterre, talk to me. What a draining morning. <laughs> Honest to God, I don't think anybody planned for England to go 120 minutes against Nigeria. But you know what, before we even talk about like whether England were good, bad or, or indifferent or whatever else, like for me... That was the best I've seen Nigeria perform. I think that the the better team on the, on on I'm gonna say on the night, but on the morning here, went out of the tournament. I think Nigeria for for all the talk before the game, everybody talking Nigeria. We have to be aware of the threat on the on the counter attack. They're just pacey and and direct. In terms of their possession, it was pretty even. So for Nigeria to go toe to toe in terms of possession, for them to nullify our our strengths within our team and really stifle us. I think we've got to give credit to to their to their team, to their manager, and how they and how they set up to really affect England's style of play. So, yeah, the the, the better team went out on the day, but for for England fans, um, of course, excited. We're now in the quarterfinals, so one step closer to bringing the World Cup home. But so many talking points from the game. I don't know where you want us to start, what to dissect. Yeah, I, um, for me, I, I'll be dead honest. That's the first time in a long time I've just been bored. Yeah. Like for me, it was such a boring game, and obviously there was so much hype around it in terms of getting getting through the round and I guess being favourites and the, like you said, the threats that Nigeria had. I just I just found it really really boring, um, mm. and it's a bit sad because actually we're in the the stages now where actually that we've got the quote unquote best teams left competing and the the teams that are on form, but. Yeah, I was overall, I was just bored. Um, mm. For me, I think maybe one highlight, obviously suffered from injuries before, is seeing Kira Walsh um, back in the team. I mentioned it in terms of if she makes it back, then Bob Marley must be alive. So I want to know where he's at because, boy, that mm. was that was a miracle. Um, yeah. And again, yeah, give props to the, the medical team who's patched her up and, and got her back on the field. I think we can't. I guess scoot over that. There's so much around well-being, and I'm sure if she wasn't right, we wouldn't have um, put her out to to represent the lionesses. So good to have her back. Um, sad for Zelem to to come back out, but again, mm. it's it's about the whole squad. Um, and when she did have the opportunity, she she came in and she was ready and played her part. So yeah, really really good. I think for me, one highlight is just again seeing the rotation of players. Good to see Beth England come on. Um, mm. And and this is like these are the times where we're talking about what is the squad um gonna be used for, who's gonna come on and be that impact player. Sometimes it's an impact in terms of not necessarily being a threat, but just steadying the ship. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think great great use of rotation in terms of the squad for sure. Um, you know, from I mean I can't if I, I'm sorry, I'm listening to everything you're saying, right? But I just can't take myself seriously these things on. I look like I'm in the Mackie's like <laughs> <laughs> Mackie's drive through asking people what what's coming next or whatever. But anyway, you know what? Um, you know what I I I, I found really difficult to watch. And I know like look, Lauren has been a key player for us. And what happens mm-hmm. when you have key players and standout players? Teams will set up to try and stop that and not apply that. I.e., when Kira plays, team are like, okay, if we stop Kira getting on the ball in deep positions, that will stifle how uh, the Lioness is set up in terms of their attack from deeper areas. Mm-hmm. Now they've identified that Lauren James is a key player. Give her time and space or, or, or put her in good areas. She can really hurt you and punish you. Now, what Nigeria did and it was effective was that they went player for player with Lauren James. Now, Lauren's only a young player. She's young. She's still learning. You hear Emma Hayes speak quite often about her. She's a, a player with huge amount of talent. And we've seen that already on the world stage and how she can change the game in an instant. But she's still learning and she's still trying to develop as a player. Now, she pretty much has probably never been followed around the park the way she was in today's game. Yeah. So Nigeria made it difficult for her. They made her try and problem solve within game. And I felt like that's a part of her development or next phase of her de- development in terms of like, what areas can I take the opposition into? Now, also, I feel like the, like, like the England, we should have, we should have, we should have recognised that early. Lauren's out of the game in terms of their man from man. Somebody in that team help her. Lauren, go and run off the, go and run off the midfielder. Go and get into some advanced <laughs> positions. Make her face her own goal. 
So there's an example and go, yeah, go and do that. And then allow somebody else to be freed up because there'll be there'll be bigger spaces in other parts of the pitch if one of our players being uh, man marked, right? We didn't yeah. we didn't identify that. But also Lauren didn't identify that. So she kept coming to the ball. So everything every time she got the ball, it was all in front. She had pressure from behind all the time. She found it really difficult to get herself involved in the game. And mm-hmm. I think that led to a little bit of frustration from her. But even the sending off her, if it's one of them, and I said it on air and, and I'll get criticized for it, but I stand by it. She's the type of player, and you see it, she does, she, she's a bit like Kelly Smith in terms of their players that they just off the cuff. Like if something's in their head, they quickly, they, they do it. Mm-hmm. Now, she got sent off for violent conduct. And as soon as I seen it, I was, I was screaming into the studio, guys, she's getting sent off. She's going to get sent off. It's a red card offence, right? And mm-hmm. it is a red card offence. She stood on, on, on the opposition. Was there any malice? No, I don't think so. It's one of those, and I said it in thinking, people probably don't understand, but you all know, when we're, having a, when we're playing five-a-side or when we're in training, you tackle me, off the ball, I'll give you a little shove or a little kick or something, like a little elbow and do something stupid, right? No, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? We do something stupid like that. We go, oh, I'm just going to, like, kick her. You can get away with that in training with frustration and just, mm. you know, you kind of get that banter. And maybe years ago, you'd have got away with something stupid. She didn't stamp on her and, like, go, oh, I'm going to really, really hurt her. It was very naive and, uh, at the time, probably very, very immature and something that, she now will have to bounce back from a huge mm-hmm. incident because this violent conduct is a potential one to three game ban. So her tournament could be over. Yeah. Even if things are gonna get to the final, there's three games left. She could be potentially banned for those three games, depending yeah. on how FIFA how FIFA see um the red card offense. So for that, you don't want to see your top players not be able to continue to participate. But at the same time, it'll be a huge learning for her. And I feel like, you know, as a nation, we have to stick by her because she's the future of our game. And of course, it it's something that we got away with in terms of, you know, we didn't lose the game. You know, England yeah. were playing for 20 minutes with, with 10 players and against a team that were dominating throughout the game. So we got away with one. But I think that we need to look at the game as a whole. And I don't think that incident was a difference in whether England were going to win or lose. I think the performance as a whole, I think we have to regroup, look at, take a look at ourselves and something needs to click because at the minute, apart from the China game where there was no pressure on that game, mm. let's not make no mistake, that, that, that China game, we'd already qualified out of the group. So there was no pressure to win it. Yeah. The opening game with pressure, we needed to win to get three points. The game against Denmark, Denmark, we needed three points to obviously get ourselves out of the group. And in today's pressure game, in all of the three pressurised game, we haven't yet been able to perform. The only yeah. one we performed, given a demonstration where we've played with that freedom and flair, was against China, but we'd already qualified. But you, you talk about that freedom and flair, and I, and I think what came to my mind is we've celebrated that actually there's players who kind of do their own thing and, and are not looking at, I guess, the bench to give them dictation. I think today was the first time where they just kind of stuck to the plan. Like no one worked it out for themselves on the yeah. pitch. They were looking for that instruction from the sideline. And it, I, I think... You I know our best players, Earth. I don't know if you agree. Set them up like that to yeah, be able to, to come back to her in order for, for tactics. It happened once when Mary Earps went down and they kind of gave mm-hmm. some instructions to Daly. But outside of that, like tactically, Nothing. like we, we want them to be able to play with freedom and move away from the 1995 dish and wave um, uh-huh. formation that, that we played for two decades. Um, and just, yeah, I just don't think that no one had it. And maybe that's when we talk about the experience in the squad, the leadership in the squad. These are those like small little bits of detail where you mm. need someone to step up. And it, again, it's not for, yes, Lauren James is a great talent and we've got loads of young, great talent in the squad, but it's not for them to be able to work that oh, out. Oh, no. no. So, but uh, look, you're playing a game against Nigeria, right? Your, your goalkeeper gets played a match and I know goalkeepers in the last 16 and I know you spoke about it before the tournament. Like they're going to play a, <clears throat> excuse me, a huge part in terms of the success of the nation, right? Or whatever nation is to progress. Yep. Mary's, been our, Mary's been our constant, our standout player throughout every game. Had mm-hmm. to pull off big saves in every game. But Jess Carter, no one ever spoke Maybe. about Jess Carter. Jess Carter's performance in coming in against China and then again today, her performance was big. She relished yeah. the challenge against going 1v1 against, you know, aggressive opposition, players mm-hmm. that want to take you on, speed, power, want to kick you a little bit, leave one in off the ball. I felt she matched them out of everyone on our team. She was somebody that matched them and quietly went about her business. Mm. But in a poor performance, probably not going to get spoken about. 100%. And I'll and I put my hands up, literally, when the, before the game kicked off. And obviously looking at, I guess, in reference of the warm-up games and like the odd little mistakes that mm. she's kind of made. I thought in terms of this high-pressure game, I said... I was at a watching thing with England, so I said, she's going to be our weakest link. I said, that's where the mistake's going to come from. Actually, she was the best player yeah. in, in our whole team. So, yeah, amazing that, again, that you recognise that as, as a pundit. But, 
yeah, I don't. I didn't think that that Mary was the the player of of the match. So that was surprised me when I saw it. With yeah, that I was just like Mary. Like, where did that come from? But yeah, definitely, yeah. I think um, Jess Carter done done her job and some. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, it was it was a really good stellar performance from from her. But I don't know where what, where did the, where did the squad go from from now? Because we've talked about it before in terms of they still don't look like that like just oiled engine that they did Mm. at the Euros. Yes, we know there's been personnel that's gone in and out, but I guess the benefit of it is it's tournament football and the whole aim is to win the next game, right? Um, So even with a bad performance today, they still got over the line. So that has to be a massive positive in terms of going forward. And that's a sign of a winning team, right? That's a sign of a team that is going to go far that, you know, yet to have a, a standout performance apart from the China game, of course, and we're able to progress and stay in the game. Like today, how we stayed in that game, I'll never know <laughs> against Nigeria. Because as I said, they they equaled possession. They created more, ch- 18 chances. I think they only had two on target though. Mm. We just lacked creativity. We genuinely did. So without being able to get Lauren James on the ball, there was no creativity. There was no creativity from wide areas. Mm-hmm. Maybe the formation. I know we spoke about it, how effective it was against um, China. And we was wondering what we could do. But maybe against uh, Nigeria today, I felt like we didn't have enough width not enough deliveries from wide areas, enough bodies committing to the to the um, attack. So there was lots of things. It's one of those now. Do we have to pick and choose when we play that formation? Because is it something that suits every time we play now? I'm not sure it does because we're, our strengths are getting balls in a box. Now, we identified that having somebody closer to Russo is better for Russo in terms of chances, but yeah. today they didn't, get, they didn't get the service. So between Lauren Hemp and, and Russo, they got nothing to them. So, nothing so just- went to them, nothing come in the box. Just a question, because I, f- I felt with Walsh coming back into the team, they just felt a bit more complacent. I don't know, if you, I don't know if you felt that. Like, they're it just a kind of, okay, like, not necessarily we're back to normal, but like, I think the last game, they were more on their toes. They had a bit, like, just a little bit of more of a spark in terms of maybe covering that extra bit of ground or yeah. putting in that extra bit of work. Today, I didn't feel, I feel like they felt like, oh, she's there, she'll... She'll do what they, she needs to yeah. do. Yeah, you know what, Earth? It's, it's annoying because you heard everybody talking. They were like, oh, now this formation, when we get Kira back, it's going to be perfect for her. We've got to get on the ball. And mm. she's got to get in a position to play forward quickly. And and what I felt from England today is that, and I said this in the, in, the, in, the, in the last podcast when I spoke, we've got Nigeria next. What did I say to you? Nigeria against England, 80, 20% in my favour, they're yeah. getting there first. So England get on the ball, they break a line and they're dwelling on the ball, taking touches, touches. Before they know it, they're getting clamped. Right, mm-hmm. So they're getting caught up. They was too slow in possession. Everything they did today was slow, lethargic. It was like, I'll take an extra touch. Well, that extra touch allowed Nigeria to recover and then regroup and get into a good shape like they did. And mm-hmm. we found it really hard then when it was in a shape to break them down. Mm-hmm. I don't actually think, or I can't remember in the game where we broke them down. We were slow in our possession. Our possession was slow. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're going to break a line, there was times where even in, and, and this is the thing, if you're going to get daily on the ball in, in a wide area, it has to be high up the pitch. Because she's always going to come back in on her right foot. When you're playing against teams that want to get back into an organised shape, once you play out, right, you've got to break that line. Now, what was happening? She'll take the touch off the left, cut back inside off the right, Nigeria get to regroup. Now, if you've got a left foot out there, naturally, they're going to take it down the line. So, it already breaks the line and we're already away into, the, into that attack. So, what was happening on our left-hand side, which most of the ball went out, because that's where, at the minute, we seem to be playing our better football down that left-hand side. Every time Rachel Daly cut back inside, it just stopped the counter-attack. Okay, so moving on to our second half. The rest of the world have also been busy, not just the Lionesses. We had the Netherlands winning 2-0 against South Africa. We also had Japan. Yes, Japan smashed Norway 3-1. Smashing Norway. Your girl Bon Matty turned up again for the World Cup 5-1. Spain, they won five one, and we had US against Sweden. Earth, your team yeah, you out. Would, you would bring that up, right? I yeah, because I'm waiting for you to bring up. I'm waiting, we, uh, in Germany ain't in the sixteen, so you can't even talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> USA, so like, man, I'm absolutely gutted. I was like the same way the Lionesses had a bad performance, but you know they're just champions. I was like, even with a bad performance, it's Megan's last tournament. They are still gonna get it over the line. The only thing that went over the line was that bloody football by 0.0 millimetres, which I'm Mm. still not convinced. I've got 20-20 vision. I saw that ball. I was like, she has saved it. There is no way 
that paper thin gap <laughs> went over the line. I need to see that. I need to actually, we need to get BB on because I need to see the real footage, like my MRI scan, because I'm still not convinced. You're not convinced? I'm not convinced. I, I not bet convinced. you there's some conspiracy that comes Mate, out. Mate, you know what? I don't even care if I'm convinced or not by that. What was a letdown? Was Megan Rapinoe's penalty? Oh. Sky did. Like, it was so in our hands to just take control of the situation. And then, obviously, then, you know, Sophia Smith, the pressure on her shoulders to put that away and then, mm. again, not being able to execute. So, for the game to be in their hands twice over and they don't take the opportunity from eight yards out or whatever it is, they didn't deserve to go through. So, yeah, credit to Sweden. Sweden spoke before the game saying that it was an ideal opportunity to play the, the Americans. They're not in a good space, blah, blah, mm. blah. Well, there you go. Probably aren't in a good space because when do you see America miss penalties the way that they did? Yeah, it was it, uh, like it's it's not something that we've ever seen before. It wasn't even close. Like a little save, or it was just completely, wow. just yeah, just just not their characteristics in terms of wow. quality and the excellence that we've come to to see over for them over the, the past few years. But Bon Matti, too much, but too much, too much, too much. <laughs> Too much, mate. I'm telling you, her footwork, the way she just sits down the player, don't take liberties like that. She's just taking liberties. But yeah, I mean, Spain were too good. I mean, the own goal, though, Earth. The mm. own goal. Yeah. I mean, what, what, I mean, we know like Spain like to possess the ball and, they, and whatever, but the keeper was so high. Lucky it didn't cost them in the end. But yeah, dominant performance against Switzerland. Um, again, they, they, they was a favourite coming into the tournament. They're, they're, face Japan again I guess along the way before they get to the final mm -hmm. Japan for me from the opening game Earth, I've said wow like Japan are the team they're the most efficient mm -hmm. like, even when they face a, a Norwegian team they've got obviously a different um, opposition in Sweden in the next round which is going to be difficult but Japan looks so bloody good like so yeah. good when you talk about taking care of passes being efficient playing with speed aggression recoveries all of the things that you want a team to do they've been flawless in that getting goals yeah. from midfield like attackers talk about replacements in and out like impact players they've had everything they've had a keeper that pulled off an absolute world of a save yeah as well who's going so to who, who's gonna stop him you tell me you I, tell I, me. I, I can't I, I can't see anyone difficult. it's quite difficult because even Earth what they showed is that they're a nation that we know that like to dominate possession they've done it in most of their games they come up mm. a team in Spain and, and people could say there was nothing to play for in that game right so we played we played a third group game Spain and Japan have qualified out of the group right but they're both teams that like to play with the ball, like to dominate yeah. possession. Now, to see Japan go, go on, Spain, you have the ball and we're going to hurt you on the counter. And to do it in such an effective way and efficient in terms of like in front of goal, clinical, in front of goal, those transitions, those turnovers, really hurting oppositions. Mm -hmm. To do that against Spain in a way that they did, I don't think anybody thought that would be a style of play that Japan could adapt and do. Yeah. And they did it. And it did it so effectively with five changes. It just blows my mind the way that they were able to do that. Now, I don't want to gas them up because everybody I'm talking about and hyping. They go out. Go, they go like this and they go, yeah, and they come crashing down. So I ain't talking about no one. I gassed up Lauren and I'm disappointed she's going to miss the next round. But I don't want to gas up uh, uh, Japan because they deserve to go all the way. And, you know, Sweden can, uh, I reckon, can cause them some sort of problems. Um, in that in that quarterfinal, but I'm hoping that they don't because, as I said, Spain, uh, sorry, Japan have been my team, and and my the team that I said might feel slightly disrespected that no one's talking about them, the Netherlands, again, just slowly going through, doing their business, getting the job done. Um, really sad in terms of South Africa going out, but mm. what a, what a great performance that they've given at this this World Cup, and I think it really gives them a, a leg to stand on when. I guess looking at the infrastructure um, and the investment that needs to take place for them now in in their country, um, in terms of bringing their game to another level, they've they've shown what they can do on a world stage with such limited resources. So imagine what they can do if they really get that investment, and even some of their players. Do uh, so you think of South Africa abroad. before Who's the tournament? That? You think of South Africa before the tournament protested mm -hmm. in not playing? Yeah. So that's how close they were to even coming or not coming and playing or not playing. So I don't know. I just, I don't know how you feel. I feel like all the nations like, are just getting closer, closer, closer. And now it's an opportunity and certainly this tournament, I hope it's opened the eyes up of federations across the world in the women's mm -hmm. game to go, actually, we are getting closer. The gap is closing and it's now an opportunity to really get behind the women's game and give these girls the platform to go and be able to be full-time professionals and, and really enhance their, you know, their countries opportunities and uh, 
for, for the younger generation across the world to, 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 to aspire to become, you know, a female footballer of some sort. Well, well, even just with that, I guess the provision and the opportunities to play a higher standard of football, like around the world, like people mm. might just think, oh yeah, it's about winning the World Cup. For some of these girls and, and players, actually, it's about an opportunity for them to be seen. Like this is a platform mm. globally that they're going to be given. There's going to be scouts, whether they're at, in Australia, New Zealand or watching it from afar. This mm. could be the chance to 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 get them out and get them to play somewhere else. So for me, it's so much more than just this one competition. There's going to be players that we're going to see pop up in and around Europe, over in America for sure, and, and the other leagues um, champ that are sort of competing for Champions League um, around the world. And I think for them, this is definitely a massive platform for them to go mm-hmm. on and and shine and be, I guess, another hero for their nation and ins- inspire another generation to believe that oh, the person that was just playing here with me has now gone on to to sort of represent our country in wider leagues and we might attract other young players who also continue to go on and pass that baton on as well. So I'm really excited to see where, not just what happens in this tournament, but where some of those players now sort of end up as a result, as a result yeah. of that. So super excited yeah. for that. Me too. Can't wait. What um what are we saying then, Earth? Obviously we've got the two games tomorrow, so you're obviously hoping Jamaica go through against Colombia. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Definitely. Final. Yeah. Linda. Cool. Linda's gonna be performing, but sorry, Linda. Like we I, I love Linda, but we need that we need that Jamaica win because I, I need to go to Halsden or Brixton to get that string vest. I've already found my <laughs> carnival horn. So that is red dusted <laughs> off and ready to be blown. And Can you imagine? I think, can I just say this one thing? Like, I'm being dead serious, so don't laugh. I think Jamaica might win the World Cup. <laughs> no. Why are you freezing? I think they no, are. No, I'm not saying anything. No, you know what? They are, they are dark horses. Come on, they're, they're doing all right. They've, they've, they've literally, they've knocked out in Brazil. They've, they've drawn to France. So they, they certainly can. They just, I just don't see goals coming to earth. Let me tell you, even if you don't see goals yet, I think that they are just, they are literally playing the like best version of tournament football where they're literally just taking each game as it comes and getting it over the line. And before you know it, they're going to be in the final and... Can I just say about, something? What? If people listen, no, people that do listen to our podcast, you actually said Jamaica would get to the final yeah, before the tournament, but we I laughed you off. Literally, I'm and telling you. this is not you. them, but obviously it's their, it's their debuts to the tournament. Rarely the debutants go on with the World Cup. So it's not the fact that we're disrespecting any of the Jamaican players. There's so many unbelievable players in that squad. And they've obviously proved that in, in getting where they've got to up to now. But it would just be, what a story they were. Like, if that was to happen... That like, is the best know, story in world football yeah, ever. In world, yeah. Well, let's not get carried away. Let's see no. what happens tomorrow. Yeah, but if it happens, because you just agree from now, that yeah. is the best, it's the best story ever I'm in sure. world football. 100% it would be if they won it. Oh, I'm looking, and on top of it, even, no matter what happens in this tournament, the, we need to get the FA to host at Wembley, Jamaica versus the Reggae Girls versus the Lionesses, and we are going to be the event organisers. And why are you laughing? It is <laughs> going to be... No, no gonna let like, me tell you. Fun. Let me tell you why. Because you know they talk about, oh, how do we get more diversity in the game? How do we make sure it's a game for all? Mm-hmm. Everyone will come out. If they want to yeah, do yeah. any publicity and get the, the people who they apparently can't get to get involved in the game, mm-hmm. they will be at that fixture. So I we at the FA in our podcast getting to listen to it and tell them yep. after the World We'll Cup have the jerk pans outside. We'll have oh, the yeah. DJs doing the mix. Oh, like I'm telling you, I don't know how much football we're going to watch, but I'm telling you the rest of the whole event, it's going to be kicking off. So you heard it here first. Reggae girls versus lionesses. Boots, balls and bras are going to be <laughs> the events team. And yeah, I bet you it's the best fixture they've ever had. That'll be jokes. Amazing. You, you could pull the strings in it. You're the FA board member. So you I thought he was going to say we could pull the string vest, but yeah. We could... <laughs> <laughs> that as well. <laughs> we could, uh, uh, we could definitely well. make it work. Anyway, we're good. We go again on Saturday Earth with um, hopefully a lioness victory. Deep breath, we're ready. And have an eye, get it over the line. Uh, I'm calling it now, Jamaica, Lionesses. The jerk pan's going to be on early doors. So if you want jerk chicken for breakfast, ackee and saltfish, all Yum. of that stuff, dumplings, planting, Dumpling. 
where it, it's going off. Yeah. It's going off. So looking forward to that. Thank you very much for listening to another edition of Boots, Balls and Bras with myself, Earth Pond, and the amazing, amazing, legendary, one of the best <laughs> players ever, Farrell Williams. Carry on, carry on, carry on, carry on. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> See you next Thank week. you guys. See you later. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. Bye.